Hi there, welcome to Nappy Invest. Now, I wasn't going to do an updated video every week to my MS portfolio. However, we're right now smack dab in the middle of reporting season, and the third week of reporting season tends to be the busiest, where the most companies release their half yearly or yearly reports, and this February was no different. And what that means is a lot of opportunities open themselves up and I found quite a few of those opportunities were quite attractive and I've jumped on a couple. So not only have I made two acquisitions in the past week um, based off uh, half year reports and the market reaction to those half year reports, I've also made one disposal. So before I get to those acquisitions and disposal, I'm just going to talk about the overall market. So the XJO has been trading in a channel for about three or four months since maybe the start or uh, middle of November. And it's an upward sloping channel, so that's actually a little bit bullish. And in the last trading week, we did see uh, some positiveness on the Monday and Tuesday. It got to the top of that trading channel uh, and looked pretty good. But then a bit of weakness came into the market towards the end of the week, particularly on the Friday. We saw the XJO for 1.4%. And at the end of the trading week, it is right smack dab in the middle of that channel. And overall, in the week, it only fell 0.19%, even though it fell 1.4% on the final day, just because there was that positive uh, few trading days on the Monday and the Tuesday. So uh, in the last two weeks, we've seen the market fall by a small percentage. I think the previous week was something like 0.4%. This week, 0.2%. But still, uh, XJO is still trading in that channel, so still fairly positive in the short term. So I did make two acquisitions in the week, and both acquisitions were based off the half-year report these companies released. Now, email payments, on first glance, when I saw their report, it looked really, really good. But I always want to wait and see how the market reacts, and not only how it reacts on that day, also reacts on subsequent days. And for instance, Self Wealth released their half year report on Friday, the 19th of February. On first glance, it looked really, really good. And the market reacted to that by with the share price increasing something like 5 to 10% on open. But during the day, there was a fair bit of selling. And by the end of the day, the share price had fallen 10%. So even though it looked quite good, the report, the market reacted quite negatively to it. I'm not sure why at this stage. So I always want to see how the market reacts because in my way of thinking, the market is smarter than I am because you have a lot of these smart people uh, coming together and that's the market. And myself, I am not smarter than the collective. Anyway, so email payments, the share price increased 16% on the day. So I waited to the next day to have uh, to buy into email payments. Pack Group, also, I've been following this company for quite a while now. I was a shareholder of Pack Group going back six or seven years ago, just after they IPO'd. And then uh, the share price increased to something like $7. And then in, over the last three or four years, the share price has been in a well-defined downtrend. Looks like things is starting to turn around for pack groups. So I decided to wait before I get a confirmation that uh, the share price has moved through a really powerful resistance level. It did that in the last two trading days. In fact, on Friday, when the overall market went down 1.4%, pack group share price went up 3%. And that is really bullish when that sort of thing happens, when the share price of a company can increase when the overall market is down. And we'll look at that, uh, why I bought in when I get to the share or the chart of pack group later in this video. So not only did I make two acquisitions in the week, I also made one disposal, and that's Station Gold. Now, gold itself is experiencing a very weak phase right now. Uh, gold prices are going down. And I bought Station Gold at 46 cents. It was a low risk buy because it fell any lower than 46 cents towards 44 cents. That would be automatic sell, and that's what I did. So it fell through 46 cents, I think, last Friday. And then uh, we experienced more weakness on the Monday and Tuesday. So decided to sell out um, of Dacian Gold. Now, the reason why we, our gold is experiencing weak phase right now is all about the yield, the bond yield. So we're seeing the long-term bond yield starting to increase. I think in Australia and America, they're heading towards 1.5, even 2%. Now, there is a relationship between um, gold prices and real yields. If you don't know what real yields is, it's just looking at the nominal bond yields minus inflation, so it takes into account the inflation. So if long-term bond yields are increasing, but inflation is staying the same, that means 
real yields are going up. So because real yields are going up, uh, that means because of the relationship between uh, real yields and gold prices, that means gold prices should be coming down, and that's exactly what they are doing. Now there is a bit of debate whether that is exactly true, but this is a graph that shows you the relationship between real gold prices and real yields from Bloomberg data. So that's something I think uh, you can just see in this graph that there is that, that relationship. So now looking at the performance of my portfolio for the week, and happy to say it was up 2.8% for the week, which is considerable upper performance from the overall market was down 0.2%. Again, the heaviest lift for the week was Zip Group, just like last week, but we also saw good performance from Hammer, Hammer Metals and SG Fleet, both up quite a bit. Worst performance was Costa Group and Stone Horse Energy. Now, you notice that there's a lot of green looking at my portfolio, and the whole point of me doing this is to ride your winners and set your losers free, and that's what I did with Dacian Gold this week. So you should see a lot of green when you do this sort of portfolio. And at the moment, Zip Group is my best performer. Uh, it's up 96% since I bought. Blue Scope still up 40%. Hammer Metals up 40%. Um, we've also seen uh, Dusk up 33%. So... You should see mostly green when you follow this sort of portfolio, ride your winners, and overall, we're now above $10,000 in profit since I started this portfolio in August. So doing fairly well, and I'm really happy with the performance of this portfolio. So the first company I bought was EML Payments, and a couple of reasons I bought uh, EML Payments on the 18th of February, the day after the release of the half-year results. Now, the market reacted very positively to those results. You can see the share price rose 16% on significant volume. Now, there's going to be a few investors who are going to be hesitant to buy in EML Payments based off what happened on the day of the release of the announcements. It gapped up, and there's a lot of people who believe all gaps close or fill. That's not true. Um, I've seen it time and time again. That doesn't always happen. And also just the fact that the share price increased 16%. There's a, some sort of recency bias that does infiltrate into investors' minds where they think the share price was 16% lower the previous day. So why would I buy it when the share price has increased 16% on the one day? It's just going to go back to what the share price was the previous day. Now, the reason that's wrong is because new information has come into the market and the market has digested that new information and has decided the value of this company is significantly higher or should be significantly higher. And time and time again, when I see this sort of announcement released in the market and we see significant volume, increase in share price, we just see the share price just keep on going up for many, many months. So this may not play out like that, but it could and I think there is a chance it will. There is a bit of resistance, or there was resistance at $4.50. That resistance has been broken. So it would surprise me to see the share price come back towards $4.50, test it, and then bounce upwards again. So if it does go to $4.50, I will buy another parcel. Second group I did buy, or company I bought, was Pack Group. Again, this is a company I've been following for a while. They released their results, uh, half year results, on the 17th of February. And again, the market did react quite positively. So this is a, a weekly chart. So email was a daily chart. This is a weekly chart. And the reason I want to show you, show you the weekly chart here, going back to October 2018, is because of a very powerful resistance level at just under $3. Now, that resistance level was formed uh, in 2019. And it really, share price really struggled to get above that level um, few times and it didn't struggle this time it just went through it on not great volume but good volume and based off some good news flow which was the half year results finished the week at three dollars and six cents which is a two-year high and that's something I really like to see is a two-year high in the share price that means I think there is blue sky moving forward because a lot of the re resistance we did see develop in 2019 and resistance is just investors selling when they see the share price get up to those levels. That resistance now is exhausted and the share price can move up because there's less and less resistance the higher and higher the share price gets. Now to the disposal of the week, which was Dacian Gold. Now I bought in the low risk buy at 46 cents and my philosophy or my strategy here moving forward was if the share price got to around 44 cents, I would sell out and it did. So I decided to sell out 
And then the share price just continued to fall, particularly the last three trading days, a fairly weak gold prices and the share price of Dacian Gold went from about 44 cents all the way to a low of about 36 cents on the Friday. Now they did release a fairly positive announcement on the Friday, but the market still reacted quite negatively just because the gold prices are still fairly weak. Now we did see a spike in volume and that could be capitulation, which means there is a potential buy moving forward for Dacian Gold, particularly if the share price starts to swing upwards. So I'll be looking at uh, Dacian Gold share price and volume quite closely on Monday and Tuesday of next uh, trading week. Now, one of my favorite buys I did make uh, just over a month ago or near a month ago, uh, Hammer Metals. They released a very positive announcement to the market. Share price increased 100% on the release of that announcement. And then the following or the subsequent day, the share price uh, was a fair bit of selling at the open. So I had the opportunity of buying at seven cents and I just jumped on that opportunity very gleefully. And then ever since that buying at seven cents, the share price has been going up. So you can see that in the chart. Now, the two days after the release of the announcement or that I bought in, the share price did test 10 cents. Now, typically the share price will test 10 cents if it's quite bullish a couple of times because 10 cents tends to be a very powerful resistance price level. And, and I'm not sure why, it could be because the increment change in share price changes at 10 cents, that could be why, or maybe just because it's a whole number. But anyway, on Friday the 19th of February, it tested 10 cents, went through 10 cents quite quickly and finished the day at 10.5 cents. So uh, maybe that's it. Maybe it's only tested 10 cents twice and now it's pulled through 10 cents and it's gonna keep on going higher. Wouldn't surprise me to see the share price come back below 10 cents a few more times and test that 10 cents range uh, before moving higher uh, over the next few months or so. Now there is potential that Hammer Metals might release some more positive news to the market and that would mean the share price goes higher from here on in. But a very bullish looking chart this is for Hammer Metals and I'm very happy to be an owner right now. Now SG Fleet, they released their half year results on the 16th of February and the market did react quite positively to the release of the announcement or the report. Now I did mention the volume was drying up uh, bef uh, for the previous month or so, and then on the release of the re results, uh, the volume did pick up, and it did pick up and pull the share price above a uh, resistance level of about 268 cents or so. So the uptrend has, or did develop back, uh, way back in early or late October, early November, and this uptrend has remained intact since then. And I hope this is one of those slow burn situations where the share price of SG Fleet keeps going up for months and months, but hopefully even years and years. And that's when you get really strong returns when that sort of thing happens. So a uh, happy owner of SG Fleet right now, and particularly with the, the result, release of results. And I'm still waiting for com some consolidation within this sector because I think that's a potential moving forward over the next few years. Now, a company I have been following for quite a few months is Treasury One. In fact, I did buy Treasury One on the release of their uh, report in August. And then lo and behold, a few days after the release of their report, which the market reacted quite positively to, uh, a few days after that, the Chinese government decided to accuse uh, Australian winemakers of dumping their wine into the Chinese market. And that put pressure on the, the Treasury One share price and the share price just fell away. And you can see every single time the share price looks like it's recovering, the China comes into the equation. And the last time we saw that was in November when the share price started to increase and the Chinese government decided to announce tariffs they were gonna put onto the Chinese or the Australian wine. And you saw the share price go from $10.50 all the way back to almost $8. Now, the day before the release of the, the, the report or the half yearly report, to the market, the share price went down to $9 and then recovered really quickly. I'm not sure what that was, why. Maybe it was one single fund manager decided to set up before the release of the results. But on the day of release of the results, not much happened with the share price of Treasury One. It stuck around $10, moved a little bit higher, a little bit lower, but it was a day after release of the announcements that the report that their share market decided to pay attention to the report. And the share price went from $10.50 all the way up to nearly $12. Share price increased above 10% in that one day. On the Friday, the share price then fell $6, uh, 6%. Uh, not $6, uh, 6%, and moving towards $10.50. 
$10.50 would be a natural buy signal. So if it fell again on Monday towards $10.50, I'd be buying in on droves. But you never know what Chinese government might, might do because every single time, it looks like the, the Treasury wine share price is improving. China comes in, steps in, and does something ridiculous. So that's all I've got this uh, update 13 to my MS portfolio. Leave any comments in the comment section, and I might answer that in due time. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, so I'm going to do these videos to give you some ideas and for entertainment, educational, and research purposes. Because I'm not advised, I can't advise you, so nothing I say is advice. If you do need advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified, who can speak to your own financial needs. That's all for this video. Have a good day. Bye.